American Rights at Work is a national advocacy organization dedicated to promoting the rights of workers to form unions and bargain collectively for decent pay, safe working conditions, and fair treatment on the job. Since its creation, we have monitored and publicized decisions and actions of the board and the impact of its actions on workers' abilities to form unions and address serious issues in their workplaces. As an advocate for the rights of working people, I can attest that the issue addressed by this hearing is not solely a concern of unions or employers. Ensuring a fair process to form a union is in the interest of broader civil society. When workers have a voice on the job and are treated fairly, the goods we buy are better made and safer, the services we utilize and rely upon are better rendered, and our economy is stimulated by workers with family sustaining jobs. It is for these reasons that I stand in support of the current proposed rule as an important step towards fixing an antiquated system that leaves workers without a fair chance to freely decide whether or not to form a union. Without doubt, there is a problem here that needs to be fixed. Just ask Tr Trisha Maker from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. In 2007, Trisha and her coworkers at HCR Manicare were hopeful that with a voice on the job through a union, they could provide better services to their patients and a better life for their families. But the company took advantage of the endless opportunities for delay in the current union election process. And four years later, Trisha and her coworkers still haven't had a chance to vote. Unfortunately, Trisha's story is not one of a kind. Currently, when employees ask for an election on whether to form a union, they encounter significant obstacles in the form of needless bureaucratic delays and costly taxpayer-funded litigation. It can take months and even years before they cast a vote. Some never get to vote at all. Meanwhile, the process rewards unscrupulous employers who game the system by pursuing claims that are often irrelevant or found to be without merit in order to stall the election date. These tactics work. According to a University of California at Berkeley study, when employers pursue litigation, elections occur an average of 124 days after the petition was filed. The longer the election is delayed, the more likely employers are to be charged with illegal misconduct. These unnecessary and drawn out legal maneuverings damage employment relations, hurt productivity, impair safety, and disrupt commerce. The proposed rule is a step in the right direction. By cutting back on needless bureaucracy and delays, the proposed rule modernizes the union election process so workers can vote on whether to form a union if they want to, while still giving employers ample opportunity to make their case. Providing a clear, fair election process and reducing needless litigation will also improve stability and reduce conflict in the workplace so that everyone can get back to business. That's good for workers, that's good for employers, and it's good for the economy. As responsible employers can attest, when workers do choose to form a union, it can make the workplace safer and more productive. Unions lift productivity on average by 19% to 24% in manufacturing, 16% in hospitals, and up to 38% in the construction sector. At a time when millions of everyday Americans are struggling just to get by, any measure that helps give workers a real chance to protect their safety and economic interests and have a voice in how best to perform their jobs can't come soon enough. In conclusion, at the very heart of this matter, this proposed rule is about one thing. When employees want to vote, they should have a fair chance to do so. As the countless workers who have seen their hopes for a better life deferred again and again know all too well, justice delayed is truly justice denied. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. <coughs> Questions? Questions? I wonder if you could respond to a number of the speakers who had said that because we are in an economic crisis, this is the wrong time to change our rules. I couldn't disagree more, um, Madam Chairman. I think in a time like this, workers need to be able to have whatever they, they so choose to um, really be able to protect their economic interests. And when they choose to form a union, they should have the right to do so freely and fairly. Do you think that this is uh, going to be destructive? to the economy to change the board's representation case rules? I think it will do just the opposite. I think workers will have the opportunity to voice their interests and oftentimes workers want to do the best job that they can and know 
um, often as much as their employer about how to do that efficiently and effectively. And a rule such as this would give them the opportunity to form a union and be able to bargain over the terms and conditions of their workplace, which would enable them um, to be better, be better employees and work harder and, um, and uh, ultimately to um, share in the rewards of the labor that they produce. Thank you for your comments and for being here with us today. Thank you so much.